Okay, I'm going to do another video about uh, graphing exponential functions with transformations. This time we're going to deal with transformations that go right and left and transformations that go up and down. Okay, so we've got this function f of x equals 2 to the x plus 2. And it's asking us for a domain, it's asking us for a range, and it wants to know what the parent function is and the transformations. So let's start off with the domain. Now the domain of any exponential function is just all real numbers. It's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, there are no x values that are not allowed in the real number system. However, the range, you got to pay attention to uh, the sort of floor of the exponential function. Um, so a basic exponential function, if I, and, we, and we're going to start with the parent function here. So we have this function of 2 to the x plus 2. The parent function is just the 2 to the x part of this. So we can have 2 to the x. We've already explored 2 to the x a bit. And 2 to the x is going to have some points at 0, 1, and 1, 2. And those are going to be on there. OK. And if you look at the bottom, if we went as far as we wanted to the right, we're going to find that it never goes below the x-axis. You can zoom in as much as you want. You can see that it will never actually make it to the x-axis. It will get super close. It's possible my Desmos will fail me here. It won't allow me to zoom in enough. It looks like it's not letting me zoom in enough. But if you think about the function 2 to the x, I'm sorry that didn't work out so as well as I thought it would. But if you think about the function 2 to the x, is there any way that can equal 0? Let's see. Equals 0. The, when I do that, the function disappeared. And the reason it disappeared is I put something that is untrue. It is impossible to raise 2 to any power that will equal 0. You can make it uh, 2 to the negative 1 billion, and that's going to be 1 over 2 to a billionth power. And that's just going to be really close to 0, but it's not going to be 0. Okay, so that's our parent function. Our domain is all real numbers, but our range is anything. It can't be negative, because 2 to the x will never be negative, and it can't be 0. So our range is y is greater than 0. So oops, it's greater than 0. So it's everything above here is a possible range value. So I'm going to turn that off because I think that will be distracting. Now we want to look at the uh, transformations. So it's 2 to the x plus 2. This plus 2 out here means that I'm adding 2 to my base function of 2 to the x not adding anything or subtracting anything anything from x i'm adding to my base function so i'm going to take these two points here and what that means is i'm adding to the y values so i'm going to add plus two to that y value and plus two to that y value so i now have a y value that is at three at zero three is a point there and 1, 4. So I've gone up by 2 for each of those. And I know what I'm doing is I am transforming vertically by 2 with this. So I'll go ahead and graph it so you can see 2 to the x plus 2. And it's right there. Everything just went up by 2. So you might notice that what I did was I looked at a couple of points that I could easily uh, graph, and then I noticed that my function was going to shift up by 2. It's not shifting horizontally at all. And so I just adjusted those two points by adding 2 to the y value, since I, that's the part that deals with vertical. Okay. When we look at another function here, you know, f of x equals 3 to the x minus 1. Instead of the function being uh, altered, I'm altering my input. 
my input has this drag of minus one. So in order to get any of the same inputs I normally would get from my parent function, I'm going to have to have x be one stronger. So this is telling me that I'm going to have a horizontal transformation where I'm going to have to take my parent function, which is 3 to the x, I'm going to have to take it 1 to the right. So let's start off. Let's actually start off with domain and range. So domain, again, is all real numbers. Range, I am not lift vertically changing my function. So the range is going to be the usual normal range. Okay. And I didn't actually address the final range of number 7. So I'm going to go ahead and address that. Number 7 does have a range, which is going to be y is greater than 2 because I have shifted my basement from zero up to two. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. This function will never ever touch y equals two. It'll just get closer and closer forever. All right, so I apologize for glossing over that, but we've taken care of that. The uh, range for this function, uh, for the parent function is greater than zero, but the range for the actual function is range is greater than two. Okay, go down to here. Our range is greater than zero because I haven't elevated this function. Okay, so let's deal with the parent function, which is three to the x. I'm gonna make this stuff go away. So instead of two to the x, I'm gonna have three to the x, and we can plot a couple of points, zero comma three to the zero, and one comma three to the first. We'll label those, and as you might have predicted, we get zero, one, and one, three. All right, so we get zero, one, and one, three. So I'm gonna change that to a one. I don't need it all fancy anymore. And that's gonna be a three, and those are on our function. We once again have, like I said, we have a an asymptote at X, at y equals zero, because zero is the basement for this function. It can't get to zero or into the negatives. And we're gonna, we're asked for the transformations. So the transformation of x minus one is going to mean this function, in order to get the same outputs, my x values are gonna have to be one bigger. Okay, and a way of thinking about that is think, okay, how am I going to rate, if I've got three to the x minus one, I've got, and I wanna get the same outputs that I got here, I've gotta solve x minus one, figure out what x value I have to have to get zero. And it's actually graphed it for me. x minus one to get zero, I have to have a one. So I need to move, I need x to equal 1 in order to have the same effect as 3 to 0. If I want my output to be, my input to be 1, I'm going to need to make x equal to 2. So 2 minus 1 will be 1, 1 minus 1 will be 0. So my x values are all going to have to move to the right by 1. So I'm going to copy this point, these points over. And in this case, instead of changing the y, I'm going to change the x. I'm going to move it over by 1. And now I have two new points that I can plot for my graph. It's going to have the usual growth pattern. And we're transforming 1 to the right. And if I do 3 to the and Desmos requires me to put in parentheses to so the x minus 1. It goes right through there. So all I've done is I've taken my base function of 3 to the x, and I've shifted it to the right by 1. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to stop right now. Uh, actually, I should just summarize briefly. So what we did in the first one is we had a base function of 2 to the x. This plus 2 is added to the overall function, so that raises the function up by 2. That doesn't affect the domain because all exponential functions have a domain of all real numbers. It does affect the range because it elevates the, base, the basement of the function. So the basement is no longer zero. 
it's now 2. So that everything in this function is greater than 2. It's never equal to 2, just like in the base function is never equal to 0. Our parent function or base function is 2 to the x, and we've transformed vertically. In this one, we're not a modifying the function. We're modifying the input, the x. So x is minus 1, and our parent function is 3 to the x. And this x minus 1 is going to cause us to transform 1 to the right, because x has to be 1 stronger in order to have the same effect as x by itself would. Our domain is all real numbers, and our range is just y is greater than, or f of x is greater than 0. And I hope that has been helpful.